Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is Troy with Sickle Bros. In today's video, we are talking about an underrated and beautiful Central American cichlid, the Cuban cichlid. I'm really excited to talk about this one, so let's dive right in. So I have two Cuban cichlids that are currently in their grow out tanks, and eventually they're gonna be going into their 75 gallon tank in the next month, but they are absolutely beautiful fish with some awesome silver and black patterns across their body, some amazing coloration that makes them really stand out in any tank. These guys are Central American cichlids and it might surprise you, they are from Cuba. So the Cuban cichlids, because they're in this warmer region, they do like temperatures to be a little warmer than other tropical fish. I would say that 80 degrees to 82 degrees Fahrenheit is a good range to aim for. They'll probably be okay from 75 to 79 as well but I think the slightly warmer temperatures brings out their behavior and colors a little bit more. Their other water parameters are pretty straightforward. They can adapt to a lot of different variants. I'll put the ideal water parameters on the screen, but the main ones to keep in mind are ammonia and nitrate. You definitely wanna keep those at zero, making sure you have a cycled tank, and then also keeping your nitrates below 40 parts per million. So that means keeping up with your filter maintenance, your water changes, and if you have live plants in the tank, that can definitely help keep the nitrates down as well. But most of the Cuban cichlids you will find are tank bred, so they are gonna be adaptable to most water parameters out there. The Cuban cichlid is a very hardy and tough fish, but at the same time, you just wanna provide a good livable environment for them long-term. The Cuban cichlid's scientific name is the Nandopsis tetracanthus, and it is closely related to another species called the Black Nasty and both the black nasty and the cuban cichlids are known to be very aggressive species the black nasty especially because they get much larger the males can get up to 13 14 inches with a big nuchal hump they are one of the most aggressive species you'll ever find the cuban cichlid can also be very aggressive as well males will usually get around 10 inches where females can get about seven but because they do get pretty big and they have that territorial aggression it is advisable to have at least a 75 gallon tank as a minimum and you might even want to get an even bigger tank if you have a pair or if you're trying to add any tank mates with them also the lifespan for the cuban cichlid is well over 10 years so if you are going to choose this cichlid which i would highly recommend just make sure you're in it for the long haul and you have a setup for them long term it is usually recommended to either keep a solo or breeding pair of cuban cichlids which to me is completely fine because they are so stunning that they are definitely a focal point of any aquarium. But to many of you that want a more community-based tank, the Cuban cichlid is probably not for you. When it does come to tank mates, it is going to be very tricky and definitely hit or miss based on the individual personality of your Cuban cichlid. But some options that could possibly work are some dither options like some bigger silver dollars, Again, you'll probably wanna get the silver dollars at a decent size. If they're too small, the Cuban cichlid will go after them and probably kill them. But also things like catfish or plecos, even those are kind of in harm's way when it comes to the Cuban cichlid. I think it can work in some instances, but just know that you're playing with fire and it's a bit hit or miss with any of these tougher fish as well. When it comes to your Central American cichlids, you could maybe do something that's on par with them in terms of aggression or size. So things like your Jack Dempsey, Convicts, Firemouse, maybe Vieja cichlids, some of those that are a little tougher, maybe the bruisers of the world out there, they can maybe go toe to toe with the Cuban as long as you have a big enough tank. I'm thinking a six foot tank at minimum for a Cuban cichlid with tank mates like this. And then when it comes to the South American cichlids, maybe an Oscar, I think the Severn would have a pretty decent chance, maybe the electric blue Acara. Geophagus might be a bit too soft for the Cuban cichlid. And some others to maybe stay away from are your African cichlids, which will likely have different tank setup and care requirements than the Cuban cichlid. And also any of your smaller to mid-sized community fish, I would definitely stay away from. Tetras, barbs that aren't big enough are likely gonna be harassed by the Cuban cichlids and any of the small, especially dwarf cichlids, likely are no-goes with the Cuban cichlid. But with any tank mate options for the Cuban, just know it's going to be hit or miss. You might get lucky and have a Cuban cichlid that isn't too aggressive, but they could always snap and go after other fish in the tank. I've seen it happen. And if they ever do get in breeding mode, all bets are off and all the fish in that tank are probably in harm's way. And when it comes to the tank setup for the Cuban cichlid, it is really straightforward. As we mentioned, a 75 gallon tank or larger is ideal. And I would go with sand, even though they can do just fine with gravel maybe driftwood, 
rocks, and just some hiding places for them, but enough space so that they can swim around the tank. I would say they are usually okay with some of your hardier plants like your Anubias or your Java Fern. They will uproot some if they get bored or if they start digging pits when they're breeding, but for the most part, they won't eat or totally shred up the plants. They're kind of like a Jack Dempsey or a Firemouth in that regard where they might pick at it if they're bored or really hungry or just want to move things around the tank, but usually you can get a few live plants to thrive in your tank with the Cuban. And in their natural habitat, the water is pretty fast moving, so I would recommend really good filtration and strong flow in the tank. Definitely get a wave maker. It will make your life so much easier. Can provide that flow that they really enjoy, but it can also create some surface agitation if it's angled upwards, creating more oxygen in the tank. And if you're keeping the temperature around 82 degrees Fahrenheit, that will definitely help with the oxygen in the tank. When it comes to feeding, it is very straightforward. They will readily eat most foods that you put in the tank. I usually go with the high protein based diet. So a lot of krill flakes from extreme and then different size pellets from extreme as well, which are high in protein. Sometimes I'll add in a little bit of variety and maybe give them some veggie matter like spirulina flakes. I'll also add in some frozen food like frozen brine shrimp or blood worms, maybe once a week or once every two weeks, just to give them a little bit of a treat and a varied diet. But the main thing is just not to overfeed your fish. It is one of the most common issues in the hobby today. It actually does more harm than good and leads to more issues like uneaten food and high nitrates in your aquarium. So you don't want that. Just make sure you're not too heavy handed when you're feeding them. Then when it comes to breeding the Cuban cichlid, it is really straightforward. All you need is a male and a female in the tank and likely they will pair up and they will breed probably on a monthly basis and they'll lay hundreds of eggs. It is not uncommon to see hundreds of fry hatch, maybe two to 400 at a time. And if you are breeding Cuban cichlids, just keep that in mind that the marketplace could definitely become oversaturated if you just have one batch of fry. So just have a plan for what you're gonna do with these babies once they grow up. For me, I'm gonna introduce my two Cuban cichlids with a divider in the tank. And I think I have a male and female. It'll be much easier to tell once they're both in the tank because the female will show some different color patterns when there's a male in the aquarium with them. One of the easiest ways to tell a difference between them is that the female will get some black splotchy coloration on their dorsal fin and the males will have a more pointed tip to that dorsal fin. And a lot of times that coloration difference doesn't show unless you have them both in the tank together. So I'm hoping I have a pair. If not, I will move one out and just keep the male. And also they are substrate spawners. So they will dig a little bit of a pit in the substrate, find an area where they can lay the eggs. The male will fertilize them. After you see eggs in the tank, it'll usually be about two to three days before the fry hatch and there will be a huge swarm of them. They're usually pretty good parents, but if you want the most chances of success, I would just scoop out those babies and put them in a different tank to grow out. But like I said, the Cuban cichlid is absolutely beautiful with that awesome coloration that really stands out with the silver and the black patterns and the marbling color on them. I think it's an awesome choice if you just want one or two fish in an aquarium that are really personable, show a lot of awesome coloration and super aggressive that you don't have to worry about that aggression if they're solo or in a pair. I think it is an interesting option and a very underrated cichlid in the hobby today. I'm really looking forward to seeing mine grow into adulthood. They'll probably put on another three or four inches and maybe even get some breeding activity from them and just watch the process, which is always really fun. But I hope you found that information helpful on the Cuban cichlid. And if you have any questions about this species, make sure to leave those down in the comment section below. Always happy to answer you and happy to help. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.